We're here at the pier before a Panga Bay Marine cleanup with Prince Songkha University student and environmentalist John Gray. So let's go. Go! A group of Prince of Songkha University or PSU Phuket campus students and John Gray Sea Snooze or JGSC company joined together to conduct a Panga Bay National Park Marine rubbish cleanup for five whole days. January 13 to 17 of 2009. The effort highlighted 20 years of John Gray's natural history by sea kayak in Thailand and celebrated John's 64th birthday that week. John, also known as caveman or lingyai, meaning big monkey, is still as enthusiastic as the day he pioneered this sea's canoe tours, and now he conveys important lessons about preserving the environment by lecturing at students' university courses, hoping that they can carry the positive messages and action to the new generation and their families. Most of the 80 students came from Gray's Coastal Tourism Management course and Dr. Rick Kramer's Environmental Science program at PSU. He wants everyone, including local residents and foreign tourists, to help maintain the extraordinary beauty of the bay, but also take action to not destroy it by throwing rubbish into the most scenic sea landscape in Thailand. Each of the five days last week, 16 different PSU Phuket Tourism and Environmental Science students collected marine rubbish while kayaking with the cavemen, who pulled about 8,000 black plastic bags of rubbish from Panga Bay in the last 20 years. However, last Friday, the wind was quite strong, limiting the area to anchor and clean up. But they had already collected about 44 bags full of rubbish in the three days beforehand in the same attractive area. So John, the caveman, took these students and us on a canoe tour through the magical and mysterious bat cave, where he is careful not to disturb the hanging bats not using strong torches or loud voices like some other visitors. He took us into the inner lagoon and described how history over millions of years has formed some of the most beautiful structures and nurtures the natural wildlife. But these could easily be ruined and wiped out in a few years by exploitation and pollution, as he explained about the bad use of two-stroke engine oil in boat engines. Uh, the water quality is not bad because uh, this is estuarine waters, uh, is very silky in the first place. The biggest problem for me is all the two-cycle speedboats that come out here, and they dump a lot of oil in the water, of course. Uh, the, if there's one thing that we really have to straighten out in Phuket, it's convert to four-cycle. Uh, Yamaha doesn't even make two-cycle engines anymore. The... Uh, the two-cycle engine, the, the, the oil goes through the engine once and it's out into the water. 30% uh, never even combust, so you've got uh, this tremendous amount of oil every time that engine operates, just going straight into the sea. And there's been so many speedboats go by underneath the overhangs outside that the kingfishers have gone away because all the small fish are dead now. So we really don't even have any... Uh, uh, kingfishers left, which are an indicator of the health of the ecosystem. So you can't see any oil on the water here because we're way in the back. But. The students from PSU found some rubbish to collect on one of the few accessible beach corners of the lagoon, hidden away either deliberately or wash it up with the tide. John also went off on a solo paddle to find more rubbish under the stunning coastline cliff. He showed us some of what he collected and its dangers. Well, this was just paddling up the coast from the Bat Cave to here, up to North Bay. Uh, actually, this is, a, this is light because the winds are so heavy right now. Uh, but let me just go through a little bit of the science here of, the, of, of uh, rubbish, right? So, so this guy is a plastic bottle, okay? Uh, it's going to take about 25 years minimum to biodegrade and in the meantime it's going to uh, a lot of things like uh, small whales, dolphin, 
uh, uh, even larger whales can take this in, right? But one that's even more dangerous is this little guy here. So this one's been floating a long time, but they come with a little bit of plastic on the top and it's much cheaper. And when it first goes in the water, this guy's absolutely clear. And that one's really dangerous because a lot of marine animals are just gonna swallow it and they don't even understand it. Now this guy is a typical James Bond Island bag, okay? Uh, they, they buy the roll at the, at the shopping mall. We all know how they are. They come out of the plastic roll one at a time. On a windy day, they'll pull them out, and maybe they have the one in their hand, but they'll pull another two or three with them. And those guys just go flying in the wind, and they end up down here. Now, the plastic bag will kill a turtle. The turtle thinks it's uh, a jellyfish, and it'll go in and it'll eat that guy. Here's another one. This classic James Bond Island bag right here, right? So they'll go in, they'll swallow this guy, and it'll uh, plug up their... Probably, yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't want to, I, maybe I don't want to know what it is, right? <laughs> but, you know, uh, these guys, we get them all the time. Uh, basically, this comes off a tour boat. Uh, they use this for the sauce. Yeah, and then just throw it over the side, you know. And when it's got the cap on it, it's going to float forever. And that cap is also plastic. It's a long time before that biodegrades. On the beach, a 21-year-old student from TSU, Vina Wan Jitang, nicknamed Mai, told us what she collected and why it was important to keep the bay clean. What have yes, you found? Yes, yes. I found a lot of foam today. I think uh, it's very big, big problem here. Very, a lot of foam that I found today. What else? And plastic. Every, everything I think is from humans, but uh, people do not, don't, don't care. They, they, they just throw out, throw out, throw out, but never think, but it is difficult to deposit. I think if uh, everywhere has a lot of garbage, I think everything uh, can destroy a uh, lot of marine or fish or natural resources. I what? think. Everyone have to pick up or have to have to help to protect the natural resources. On the boat, another student, Christopher Quan Yun, explained to us why he joined in the cleanup. Also, I am uh, live in Pyongyang, and I never been here before. And the the environment around this is very very beautiful, and. Well, I think this is the, the best, uh, the attractive place for the tourists to come here. I think it's very, very important because this, uh, this project can make the local people to realize that they should uh, help together to clean the place for the tourists when they come to see. And the tourists will be happy for this project because we will clean a Dutch intern at John Spray Sea Canoe Company, Malus Van de Vue, told us about her impressions of the week and volunteer task with John. I think, yeah, it's great to get awareness, especially from the students here, because, yeah, they live here all around, but they don't know much about the environment and how to, yeah, keep it this way. And so now, they, yeah, they, we have created awareness for also, uh, yeah, the students and yeah, everybody's coming together and yeah, get a lesson for the environment. I think yeah, it just fits in the picture. Like when you are really an environmentalist, yeah, with the canoe you are not harming anything and don't not using any fuel or anything. So I think yeah, it just fits in the whole picture. This week of cleanups took a lot of time and effort, not to mention money John Gray could have earned just taking tours out during this high season. The famous Beatles songs, When I'm 64, ask, Will you still need me? Will you still feed me? When I'm 64, we think the Panga Bay still needs you, John, but now you have a new generation to help you. Thank you, Princess Songkai University students and John Gray for taking care of our beautiful marine environment. You guys all take care too. Bye. Bye.